think your hearing isn't accurate enough to tell when your pipes are in or out of tune? I often hear this from pipers. I think what they really mean is that their tuning efforts become confused by all the variables that affect bagpipe tuning. Sound, maintenance, steadiness, and pure physical effort. I find that when I stand in front of a room full of pipers and tune two drones together, almost everyone in the room recognizes the precise moment when the drones are in tune. Hearing is rarely the problem. Listening might be. Let me demonstrate. For demonstration purposes, this bagpipe has the chanter removed and the bass drone corked. I've set the two tenor drones quite out of tune. You'll hear this when I strike up. I'll slowly bring them into tune by moving one drone top on its tuning slide, like this. happened here. When drones are out of tune, it's because one is sharper or flatter than the other. As I move the slide, I change the length of the drone. When I move the drone top upwards, the drone becomes longer and the pitch becomes flatter or lower. When I move the drone top down, the drone becomes shorter and the pitch becomes sharper or higher. This is an important thing to remember throughout this video and in all your piping. The longer the tube, the lower or flatter the pitch, and vice versa. For now though, you don't really need to know sharp from flat. You just need to know in tune from out of tune. As I move one drone on its tuning slide, you hear clearly how two noisy and out of tune sounds slowly blend into what sounds like one single tenor drone. Let's listen again. <laughs> else might help you through this process? You probably heard beats. They are the wah, wah, wah sound that lengthens out and disappears as the drones come into tune. The time between beats becomes longer until they disappear. And at that point, the two drones are in tune. If the beats become faster, rather than slower. The drones are getting further out of tune. You need to reverse directions. Listening to the beats can be very helpful, though some pipers listen instead to the clarity of the drone. For at the moment the two drones are in unison, they sound like one perfectly clear drone. I also want you to take note of how I'm actually moving the drone up and down with my hand. I don't grab the drone with my fist and crank it up or down. I need very fine and controlled adjustment. So I brace my hand against the drone bottom like this and use my thumb and one or two fingers to move the drone top. To do this, the tuning slides on your drones need to be very finely hemped and easy to move. We'll talk more about this later. People sometimes ask me how I know when the drones are in tune. Actually, I don't. What I'm listening for is the point where the drones are least out of tune. Let me explain. As I'm tuning one drone to the other, I don't stop when I think, hey, this is now in tune. Instead, even when I think it's in tune, I keep moving it a little further. Even when it sounds like one drone or when I can't hear beats anymore, I keep going. Soon, I'll hear the drones start to go out of tune again. Then, I stop moving it that way 
and move it back. Soon they come back into tune. You may wonder how I know which way to move the drone when I'm tuning. The truth is I rarely do. I simply move it and listen to whether it's coming more in tune or not. You'll have to experiment and practice this, but with experience you'll start to guess right more often than not. One trick is to remember where your drone top sits on the tuning pin when it's in tune. When you get your pipes out, make sure you start with all your drones approximately in their normal tuning position. Let's talk briefly about these tuning positions. Expert players like to have their tenor drones tuning here, just touching or a bit above the bottom of the hemp. This makes maximum use of this large tone chamber and makes for a richer, more refined drone sound. Similarly, the bass drone gives the best tone when the top joint is in the same position and is left there. The bottom joint should be about halfway up this tuning pin, like this. When tuning, you will only use this lower joint to tune the bass drone, as we'll see later. Tuning position isn't quite so critical with the bass drone bottom. However, experienced band players will tell you that a bass drone that tunes too high on the bottom joint has a far greater chance of blaring or double toning like a hoarse siren when you strike in. You'll want to avoid that as it can ruin the start of a band performance.